Hi, I'm Otto Pensler. I'm in my office at the Mysterious Bookshop. And today we're going to talk about rare books. And uh, this is my first uh, video involving rare books. And um, we're winging it. We don't have a we don't have a set program, but uh, I want to talk about rare books. I want to sp talk specifically about S. S. Van Dyne today, um, and maybe talk a little about rare books and collecting in general. Um, one of the things that you should know about Van Dyne is that his real name is Willard Huntington Wright, who was an extremely well known art critic, theater critic, opera critic. Uh, and expert on many subjects. He had many books written as Willard Huntington Wright before he created Philo Vance. Uh, he got ill and uh, was in bed and started reading mystery fiction and read tons of them. And uh, he thought at one point that he, first of all, he liked the form because he kept reading more of it. And then he decided that he could do better and set out to write a, uh, a mystery. And his first mystery was called The Benson Murder Case. I have a copy here, of course, being prepared. <laughs> and here's what it looks like. This is a first edition of the book. Virtually all of the books looked very similar. It had a case file on, on the cover. This is, if this were a true first edition dust jacket, the book is a first edition, but if it had a first edition dust jacket, it would be a $10,000 book. It's a, it's a later state of the dust jacket because on the back flap, it lists the Canary Murder Case, which is the second book in the Philo Van series. If it didn't have that, and it had the original flap, it would be a $10,000 book. As it is, it's a pretty rare jacket and a very uncommon book, and it's $1,500 because it's in really terrific shape. Now, on the subject of condition, uh, booksellers use some terms differently than you would normally use in real life. This is a fine, virtually fine copy of the book. If it were in a catalog and you saw fine or near fine, because it has a tiny little bit of wear up at the corners, so it's, it's not quite a fine copy, but it's near fine. If you saw a description of a different jacket and it said it was a good jacket, it means it's not very good. The, the, the description of a good jacket is one that's somewhat worn. The, the, uh, the progression of condition goes from poor, which is a ratty copy, it's a reading copy, uh, to fair, to good, to very good, to fine. And fine is about as good as it can get. Uh, sometimes I and other booksellers will say very fine, just emphasizing how what a beautiful copy it is. But if you're serious about collecting and you care about condition, remember the word fine as opposed to good or very good. So um, I also want to show you uh, another book by Van Dyne. This is The Winter Murder Case. This is his last book. His methodology for writing these books is unlike any other mystery writer or any other writer that I know. He would write a, uh, a detailed um, uh, book, description of the book, not a description, but he was, he was actually writing the book, uh, and it took 25,000 words. Then he would rewrite it, filling in more background, more character development, uh, and, uh, and so on. And then he would write it a third time. He was editing as he went along because his plots were really meticulous. Um, and then the third, he would add a lot of the arcane knowledge that he had. The, the, the Philo Vance character was a pedant, much as Van Dyne himself was. Somewhat arrogant, uh, very learned, and very happy to show off 
all the things that he learned. So he would uh, he would describe a uh, oh a scarab. Here's an ancient Egyptian scarab, and go into great length describing where it was from and which dynasty, etc. Uh, and so. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge being picked up along the way if you could wade through the uh, the, the boredom of his endless monologues on the subject. <laughs> now, the Winter Murder Case is a fairly scarce book, and the reason is that Van Dyne died before he could do the third rewrite. So it's a little shorter than the others, uh, and hasn't been fully uh, fully finished. And I think the publisher was a little concerned that since it wasn't a totally finished book, and they, so they printed a smaller quantity. But let me show you one thing that you should know about collecting Van Dyne. The, uh, this book, by the way, is, is really near fine, a near fine jacket. Um, very handsome copy. And I'll show you how you can tell a first edition. Scribner would put the date on the title page, and that date had to match the date on the copyright page. But they also indicated a first edition by using the capital letter A on the copyright page for a first edition. Here's a reprint of the Winter Murder Case, which I can show you, has a date on the title page, and you go to the copyright page, mm. no A. Damn. And that's how you tell. They began that in 1930. So the very first books, the Benson Murder Case and the Canary uh, Murder Case, did not have an A on the, on the copyright page because Scribner's had not yet begun that process. Um, I'll show you something that's interesting. The only, his, all 12 of his books were the something murder case. Every one of the, 11 of the books all used six letter words. The only exception is the Gracie Allen murder case. He knew he was friends with Gracie Allen. And uh, as a result, he uh, used her in this book, and it became a movie called, the, not surprisingly, The Gracie Allen Murder <laughs> Case. And you know who starred in it? Yes, Gracie Allen. So here's the, here's the copyright page, and you flip to, the, I'm sorry, the title page, you flip to the copyright page, there's the A, so we know it's the first edition. This is a particularly interesting copy because it's inscribed to beautiful, Anna, with all the love of William. Now, his name was Willard Huntington Wright, but William was a family name. And so when you see a copy inscribed William, it was to either a member of his family or to somebody to whom he was extremely close. Uh, because even to uh, many of his friends, he inscribed the book S.S. Van Dyne. Here's what the signature looks like. It's unusual, by the way, to have just a signature in the book. In the 1920s and 30s, when these books were being published, author mystery writers did not go on tour the way they do now. And so it's very uncommon to see a, a signature only without an inscription. Almost all of the books of that era are inscribed to someone because they were generally gifts or somebody who was a fan who would come up and say, uh, I'm a fan, would you autograph my book? And the author would say, what's your name? And they would inscribe the book. This is a second printing, so it's only $250. If it were a first printing of the Bishop murder case, it would probably be, a th it would probably be a th around $1,000 in this condition. Um, I bought a terrific collection of Van Dyne, um, including all of the books that he wrote as Willard Huntington Wright, uh, or even books that uh, just have introductions by him. He was so popular that a lot of people wanted 
uh, him to write an introduction in, in a way of helping to sell the book. Um, here's one of his early books called The Future of Painting, which is, which is an autographed copy, inscribed copy, signed with his full name, Willard Huntington Wright. Because it's not a mystery, and because it's not a Philo Vance mystery, even though it's a nice copy and first edition dust jacket, it's only $125 because it's less collected and it's less interesting in my store because you're here because you're a mystery fan. And we do, we sell mysteries here. So I'm eager to sell the non-mysteries. So I keep the prices very low. Here's, he was a great fan of Scottish Terriers, always owned one. And, and raised champions. And here's a book uh, with his introduction. Um, this one, uh, he was also an expert in tropical fishes, <laughs> of all things. Um, and he wrote a foreword to this book. I'm showing it merely as a curiosity. It's $10, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not a valuable book, but it's just an unusual thing to see. So that's, uh, that's my little talk about S.S. Van Dyne. We'll be back with another author next week. Um, and I have to do a commercial. Okay. Everything that you've seen and many, many more. There are hundreds of uh, Van Dyne and Huntington Wright books and other things like theater posters and stills and signed contracts, etc. They're all for sale. They're all at the bookshop. If you're interested in collecting Van Dyne or want to fill in a collection that you've already started, feel free to call us 212-587-1011 or go online, mysteriousbookshop.com. All of our contact information is there. Look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for tuning in.